Hi everyone. Um, as we approach the March 2021 qualification round, I thought it would be really helpful to record a series of short videos offering some top tips on how to navigate the jobs market for newly qualified solicitors. But I thought rather than me doing it on my own, I'd um, team up with Laura McSherry, who um, is a former legal recruiter and has um, done quite a lot of work in this space, um, placing NQs into a real mix of firms. Uh, to kickstart the series, I thought we'd um, talk about uh, recruiters, because I thought, why not? That's a good place to start. Laura, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yes, very well. So let me just go straight to the point. How, what do you candidates need to do to impress a recruiter? I think it starts off with pick up the phone. Um, it, recruiters get sent a lot of emails um, and it's always you know, by, by speaking to candidates that you can really um, get an idea about who they are and, and also just what you're looking for. Have a think beforehand about compromises that you're wanting to make. So have a think about geography or practice area. Um, if you're willing to, to make compromises in those, salary, the type of firm that you'd like to go to. So that when you speak to the recruiter, you're quite focused and you know, they, you're coming to them as a, as a package and you're ready to go and your CV is up to date. Um, and it's about, you know, it's a two way relationship. It's, it's about having conversations. And if you change your mind, update them. Um, so be responsive and, and, you know, kind of work with them rather than having a number and, and sending out the initial email and then not getting in contact for a while. That's really helpful. I agree with you 100% in that. I think some candidates come to recruiters to have a good old whinge about how they missed out on an internal opportunity. They're being wholly unrealistic about what would be a, you know, an achievable sort of position for them to target. Um, or they might be unrealistic with regard to money because they want to move in house, but don't haven't done any research into NQ salaries in house. Mm -hmm. And what about um, choosing a recruiter? How do you go about finding a recruiter as an NQ? Um, so I think it's it's part of those initial conversations, really. Um, you know, recommendations are great. Of course, speak to your friends, partners that you've worked with. Firms will work with certain recruiters as well. They'll have a preferred supplier list. So try to find some that you know, have been recommended and then speak to them, find out the firms that they work with. You know, do you get on with them? That always helps if you, you know, if you have a client that you get on with, you put in that extra, extra bit of work for them. So have a chat, find out who they last placed into the team. Do they focus on a particular practice area? Do they work with specific firms? Um, have they helped in queues or do they really focus on more senior lawyers? Um, and see if they're going to be the right person for you and then give it a go. And how many recruiters should a candidate work with? Because I get asked that question so many times because I've had some trainees on my outplacement programme say to me, you know, I've been told that I should only, you know, work exclusively with one recruiter. Well, whilst I've worked with trainees who have gone the other way and perhaps spread themselves a little bit too thinly. I think it's about being organised and, and speak to, you know, initially as many as you need to, but having more kind of as a rule of thumb, having more than three active recruiters, recruiters that are actually talking to regularly sending you roles, any more than three is a bit hard to juggle. Um, you do need to, I can't stress enough, thank you, keep um, a, a spreadsheet with the recruiter that you've spoken to, which firms they've sent your CV off to so that there isn't any crossover. Um, but I think you know, speak to as many as you can because it's good to have lots of advice, but three active is a, is a good aim. I agree. I think it's the active point. Where, what, where I possibly disagree is that you might find that you need to replenish those pieces a bit more. And the reason why this whole point comes about, I might as well throw that into the mix now so that trainees are familiar with, with the issue. You've mentioned the crossover and the duplicate application, which isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but can obviously cause, you know, a embarrass, you know, fair degree of embarrassment for the candidate. And it might make the firm question the candidate's sort of credentials, because if you can't, you know, organise your recruiters, what does that say about judgment, organisational skills, etc. The other point, of course, is that, you know, the way recruiters 
um, run their sort of agencies is that you know it's contingent recruitment meaning that you only get the fee if you successfully place a candidate and that's where being loyal towards a recruiter can you know pay you know pay off because the recruiter is more likely to return that loyalty by being a bit more proactive with your search whereas if you, a recruiter you know smells a rat and thinks that you've spread yourself far too thinly and you're talking to nine other agencies their chances of making money from you has gone down by 90 percent and therefore they put 10 percent effort into your search and that's really the main reason why you know if you are being told as a trainee that you should not register with too many agencies that's that that is the fundamental reason um but you know one final point about recruiters from my perspective is that you know please avoid being overly loyal because a recruiter talks the talk is super friendly as far as i'm concerned a recruiter is only as good as the vacancies that they're working on and um you know, it's worth noting that and that is especially the case with recruiters who focus on in-house roles where the vacancies aren't spread as thinly because you'll know this won't you Laura that with private practice there's quite a lot of overlap yes there is yeah there is certainly great okay um any final remarks on on agencies and recruiters no I think well I just remember it's it's a working relationship um, so don't be afraid to just speak, have, have a chat with a few and, and find some that you think are really going to help you and have your best interest at heart. Yeah. And don't forget, you know, as I, I think you mentioned, be responsive. So even if a recruiter, you know, isn't perhaps the friendliest or is a little bit pushy, it's still worth, you know, managing that relationship to your advantage because you just don't know which recruiter is going to have that perfect role for you. And you may need to kiss a few frogs along the way, but that's fine. The main point is that they're there to act as your intermediary. And in a competitive jobs market, which I suspect the March 2020 qualification round will be, recruiters can, you know, cherry pick which candidates they're going to work most actively with. So, you know, the way you treat them will inevitably impact how they treat you back. So uh, play nice and, um, you know, don't be afraid to shop around if um, you feel that a recruiter has sort of naturally run out of ideas for you because every recruiter will have an exhaustive list of clients. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Laura. Next time we'll be talking about uh, LinkedIn. So do join us then. Thank you. Bye. Bye.